it's a dreary, rainy day today. And I need to make a new pressure flaker. So I've got this deer antler that I had already cut one tine off and made a pressure flaker with, I think. Can't remember exactly what I did with this one. I'm it might have gone into making a, a chest crutch for a pressure blade core. Maybe I used something else for that. Anyways, I used it for something. And now I'm going to take off this piece and use that as my next pressure flaker. Hold it just like that because this flat part I want to use for something else. So eventually I'm going to cut this tine off as well. Maybe I'll just do that today. I'll make two different pressure flakers with it and then cut off this part at some point and make something out of it. Maybe a pendant or maybe something else. I'm not sure. And then this part, you know, might end up being a small billet eventually. Anyways, I'm going to do this all with stone tools and I'll film some of the process. I probably should have soaked this in water first, but I don't know. It's been outside all winter in the cold and the wet. It's really humid out and wet today, so maybe it won't be too hard. I'm just going to use a stone blade or flake that I'll can't get the focus to work here anyways I'm gonna use the stone blade or flake and probably pressure flake some serrations into it and saw around here and then when it's about you know maybe a third of the way almost half the way I'll just give it a smack with a rock to finish it off and then I'll have a new pressure flaker all right, here goes. So rather than make a whole new tool, I just decided to use this small biface I was working on. And I, you know, probably about a month or two ago and I couldn't quite get under the cortex on this side. So it's kind of serrated already. I'm just gonna start using it. So I'll just film the start of this process and the end of it probably, and then get started on the, the napping part of the video, because this is just going to be very repetitive over and over again. I think I'm going to try and cut it right here. You know, I don't want to cut it at the widest part, that'll be a lot more work. I don't want to get as much length as I can, so maybe something right here would be good. Start. Maybe I can get this camera a bit closer. I don't think I'll film too much more of this.
Yep, that's enough filming for now. I'll carry on for probably about 20 minutes and be back to give you an update then. probably retouch this edge a couple times throughout this process but it's cutting fairly well the antler must be you know damp enough it's not super dry I made that mistake earlier trying to work dry antler takes probably five times ten times as long as wet antler so anyways that's enough see you in a bit actually only took about five minutes to get to this point. Made some good progress. Oops. This is what the edge on the tool looks like. It's getting pretty rounded and dull. So I'm gonna do a round of pressure flaking on it. Actually, maybe I'll just use the tip. I can get used to it before it's even off of the the parent antler yeah I'll film that part of the process and then keep slicing away okay let's get started there's a little notch in there from something I'm not quite sure what So I'm just going to take one round of flakes off, probably this way. It's already nice and ground down. This is a little bit awkward to hold like this, but it's okay. It just needs to take small flakes. see that nice sharp serration that's left now. I'll try and get this on camera better. Okay, that looks good. Nice and sharp. Re serrated. Better edge angle to work with. So, I don't even need to change. All I need to do is change hands. And just keep working away. I'll just try and cut through this flatter part as much as I can. When I first sharpen a stone tool, I like to use it a little bit, you know, gently at first. If you use it too hard right away, you know, all the little serrations will just chip away and it'll be dull really quickly. But if you work a little slower and softer at first, you know, there will just be tiny micro flakes, you know, microscopic chips taken out of the serrations. 
and they won't get as dull as quickly and you know they'll be a bit more durable after those kind of micro flakes are taken out and I think in the end actually last longer the sharpness of the edge anyways alright I'll probably turn the camera off again and come back later I'm sure I'll do another round of sharpening before the end of this but I don't need to show that on camera again, just the once is enough. <sighs> so... Yeah, I'll come back when I've done sawing through this as much as I need to and I'll break it off on camera and then grind grind down the base and the tip just a little bit to blunt this or maybe I'll just leave it, I don't know uh, I should blunt it down a little bit because it's weak, it'll probably end up breaking so yeah, alright, I'll be back well we've been at this for at least 20 minutes closer to 30 probably made some really good progress I think that should be enough. I resharpened this twice. It came down this face the second time and then this face the third time. Worked out pretty well. Handy little tool there, just a simple biface with some pressure flaked edges. Okay. I'm just going to Grab some rocks, this will be my anvil, and you know, kind of leaving a, oops, battery's running low, leaving a gap in between this part and the stone, and having contact over here, I'm just going to give it a good smack with another stone, and hopefully That'll do the job without too much collateral damage. Okay, try and do this at a good angle that the camera can see it and I don't hit the camera. Just like that maybe. There we go. Quick and easy. Oh, I think I hit the camera just with my shoulder there. Still bobbing around a little bit. Okay, so that's what it looks like. You can see how far I saw it in there. Probably just two millimeters, maybe three all around. That's all that's needed, you know. The break will follow the incisions that you make, especially when the antler is this kind of soft. It's still fairly damp and humid out. It's pretty dry, but it's not super dry, so it didn't splinter at all. Pretty much the perfect humidity level, I think. Well, that looks pretty cool inside there. I'll just give that a grind down so it's not, you know, abrading my hand as I use it. But this, oh, this fits really well in my hand there. That's gonna be a perfect Perfect little pressure flaker. I love it already. I'm just gonna grind it down on the <laughs> on the cinder block, cement cinder block that this little room, this structure I nap in is made out of. Okay, I'll be back in uh, about five minutes after I do that, probably less. Okay, this is the final product. I just smoothed it down enough so that it's not bugging me while I hold it. I can hold it right there in my palm, you know, different ways. So, 
And I just blunted the tip a little bit, ground down just a small amount to get through the kind of nick that was in there. So, get going back with this piece now. Using pressure flaking to get all these edges nice and, you know, regular, and then start shaping platforms for indirect percussion. It's working very well. It's kind of a weird spot here. You can see there's a bunch more steps on that platform I need to try and get rid of before I can take a flight going back that way. goes on yeah I think so no I actually lost a little bit of it that was that little flake I took off now I should be able to create a good platform here to come back that way maybe that'll even be a direct percussion flake with the antler Depends on the type of platform I can set up here. I can probably get away with direct percussion, but I think I need to try and be a little more precise than that. I think I can get big enough flake with this indirect percussion here. Start. There we go. That's better. Very happy with that one. That was kind of an overface flake. Very nice. Try and do that again, angle it a little bit more this way, Exactly what I wanted, but 
take it. I'm really liking this pressure flaker. It works really well for me. Maybe I can angle a flake this way back towards the base. Didn't go quite the direction I wanted, but worked out okay. Now I can make another platform in the middle and take out this high spot.
took a big bite out of that platform, that edge. Big whipped, whipped flake there. But it worked out well. That base is getting pretty thin. I don't think I mentioned what I was trying to make or what I've been trying to make. Rather, I haven't had a plan in mind, mind up until now, really. I was just trying to make a, you know, nice by face up until this point. But now that it's getting down to the later stages, I need to think about what I want this to be, actually. So I think it's a bit late to go for a Clovis because the base is much thinner than the, you know, the mid, middle part. See how it's really thin down here. I'd never be able to set up a good you know, fluting platform, especially on this face, so I won't even try, but I think I'm going to turn this into a, a Dalton point, maybe. It's been a little while since I made one of those. I think it's a good time to give it another go. I've got pretty good overall shape and you know geometry of this biface come on yeah I think it would make a decent Dalton at this point I think I need to sharpen up this pressure flaker already There it goes. I knew it wanted to come off. Okay. So, that's an example of a pressure flake that kind of, you know, whipped. Took out a bunch of the edge. Had to do that to set up a good platform to come back the other way, take out this high spot here. At this stage, you know, I think it's more important to, to have good controlled, you know, regular edges than it is to keep thinning as much as possible. You know, try and take down your high spots so that everything kind of evens out. But really, you're not going to be able to make it substantially thinner without, you know, messing up your, your flaking pattern at this point and having to do a lot more work later on and make the piece a lot smaller, you know, narrower and probably shorter in the end to you know because you got to keep keep working those edges until they're regular and you can get them turned into a nice proper edge but you know at some point you got to just say it's thin enough and start refining it Well, <laughs> just as I say that, I took off quite quite a big flake there. That was actually awesome. That was a thick spot for sure. Nice. Anyways. This video is probably getting up there in length now, over probably over 20 minutes now, including the bit about making making this pressure flaker which I'll just put on the same video 
Why not? So as I said in the last two videos, this piece that I'm working on is a, a giveaway prize for somebody to enter the giveaway. What you gotta do is comment on this video or one of the other ones in the series, the Georgetown Church series. You also gotta leave a like on one of the videos and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you got all three of those things down, then I'm gonna put your name in the draw. I think I'm just gonna do it the manual way. I don't think I'll get so many entries that I'm gonna need to, you know, use software or something. Maybe that should be a, another indirect hit here. Smaller one coming back at this angle. that one it's always tricky when you gotta angle your flakes I find there we go it worked out pretty well I think I'll just pressure flake this edge back under control. And call this the end of part, what is it now? Part five, I think. This part's bugging me. I'll take care of that first before the end of this video. Now I gotta try not to take off too big of a flake here. It needs to be short but wide if I can manage that. I hope I've been on camera this whole time. I haven't really been paying attention too much. Good actually. Maybe one more. Follow that edge, that ridge, I mean.
Okay, this should be the last flake of this video, finally. Bit of a long one. But I think I went over all the details for the giveaway. Thanks to everybody who's entered so far. You've actually, oh wow, that was a bit too big. That was actually a bit of an overshot. Just about. Yeah, that's wild. Took off just a little bit. <laughs> nice. Well, that thins that tip down real nice. That's going to be a sharp, usable hunting point for sure. Okay, that's enough. I'll even everything out in the next one. I think I made pretty good progress there. Starting to get things a little more regularized on this face especially. This one still needs a lot of work. I'm going to turn this edge. Or I've almost finished turning this edge. I'll prepare some thick platforms to take some thick flakes up the middle to thin that out and then get this thing finished in uh, another video or two. All right, that's enough for now. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers.